Welcome to Education in Focus. I'm your host, Eliana Kernodal. A Republican-led congressional committee spoke to school leaders from districts across the country that have seen anti-Semitic incidents. They asked how school leaders responded to those incidents and what they're doing to prevent further incidents. Joining me to tell us more is Chalkboard News Editor Brendan Clary. Brendan, what is the context of this committee hearing? Is it a special hearing? What's going on there? Yeah, Eliana, the the context really is, you know, there's been a, a increase in these anti-Semitic incidents since the October 7th attack on Israel by the, uh, well, frankly, terrorist organization d- known as Hamas, right, that they, they went um, uh, into Israel and, and committed, you know, heinous acts of terror. And since then, you know, there's been a lot of upheaval around um, the conflict in, in Israel and you know, in Gaza. And so that's that's boiled over into a lot of different protests, both at the universities, which we've heard a lot about in recent weeks, but also in uh, high schools in the days after the attack. So this is really a uh, House Republicans. They called a, a committee hearing to to discuss with leaders of some of these uh, larger school districts in the nation where some of these anti-Semitic incidences have taken place to, you know, ask them about what they're doing to hold students accountable, teachers accountable, like what measures they're taking. Um, So I think you can kind of appreciate there's some political maneuvering probably at at play here, right? That's usually how some of these committee hearings work, where we have, you know, one side calling a hearing and and holding whoever's in power, trying to hold others to account and, and kind of grill them. And, you know, the other side trying to stand up for teachers or stand up and, you know, say like, okay, we can condemn anti-Semitism, but we know that most teachers are, are doing the right thing. Right. And, and so I think that you can kind of, you can kind of see, you saw this on both sides uh, during the hearing, which I, I watched as I covered it, um, you know, that we have different lawmakers uh, kind of, you know, following what might be, the, you know, the, the usual sort of lines, right. And, and sort of making, their own points without sometimes hearing uh, what the witnesses would have to say. Right. So that is uh, sort of the backdrop, right. Is that we've seen like a rise in these anti-Semitic events and we've covered some of them in chalkboard news. So what were some of the school districts that were represented here? Like what school leaders were talking at this committee hearing? Yeah, absolutely. So they, um, the leader of the New York city school district, um, public school district, uh, David Banks, chancellor there, he was the, first witness to speak and they each have like a little thing that they can talk about and they had like I think five minutes each to to discuss like have like a statement essentially uh Carla Silvestri president of the Montgomery County Public Schools Board of Education where is Montgomery Montgomery County is outside DC so that's uh I think it's like right out outside DC there in Maryland um and then uh Anikia Ford Morthel uh who's superintendent of Berkeley Unified Public Schools in Berkeley California uh so those are the three witnesses and that's where they're from right and that's where some of these maybe more notable anti-semitic incidents have happened yeah let's get into those specific incidences what were they what responses did they discuss and like what were some of the questions that they got into yeah absolutely one of the big ones in new york was at hillcrest high school where uh, students after the October 7th attack, I think it was in uh, November, I believe, the students, you know, were rioting and, and mobbed a Jewish teacher. And so, and and Banks said a Jewish teacher was targeted in a frightening episode. And I'm quoting from him. Uh, he told uh, a lawmaker, we didn't accept that. We pushed back on that tremendously. So he was pretty outspoken and, you know, that the New York City Department of Education is taking action against these students, against some of these administrators who allow this to happen, that they won't allow anti-Semitism in their schools. That uh, administrator was not fired uh, there was some some confusion about that. He was just moved to a different position in the Department of Education. So, you know, listeners can can take that as they as they want to. But that's what we learned during the hearing is that you know they it just got moved to like a bureaucratic position. Montgomery County Public Schools, they had a um, several teachers who included like in their email signature um, from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free, and so they were actually um, suspended. I think placed on leave and investigated for that, that use of the phrase. But then uh, have since been like uh, moved to a different school or something. So they're still employed there. But I think that there's like some of these questions about, you know, hostility. Um, and that's that's one of the the other, you know, like a notable incidents there. There it was less specific. And so there wasn't like a mention specifically about what was going on as much, I don't think, in, in the uh, Maryland County Public Schools. 
And then, and uh, Nikia Ford Morthel from Berkeley, she wouldn't comment on any, any specific issues or any specific actions that the school district has taken. She was citing these uh, like state and federal you know, privacy laws for students, which is um, doesn't really hold water. And somebody asked her, you know, well, why can Chancellor Banks describe these things and you can't? And so she's like, I'm just not going to. So that that was our answer is like she just didn't want to and was was not going to. But what we have in response to that is, you know, the Brandeis Center, they filed a complaint with the Office of Civil Rights, essentially, at, at the Department of Education for a number of different incidents about walkouts that were teacher-led protesting, you know, the the Israeli offensive in, in the Gaza Strip and different kinds of things that are where they, where they were shouting anti-Semitic things or things that were like, you know, the river to the sea, Palestine will be free, which everybody, all the witnesses said, you know, is uh, anti-Semitic. Um, so the, one of the Republican lawmakers said, do you think that that's anti-Semitic? And everybody said yes. Um, and so there was a couple of, you know, hedging of like when it's used to signal the removal of the Jews from Israel, like then it's, it's, it's anti-Semitic. But I, th- I think that, you know, there, there's a lot of that kind of yelling and those kinds of chants at these, Berkeley, according to the complaint filed from the, the Brandeis Center. We don't have a, a lot of time left, but briefly, I just wanted to ask about David Banks, who's the chancellor of the New York City Public School District, and kind of his background as a school resource officer. How do you feel like that plays into his responses and how he's handled these situations? Yeah, that's a great question because I th- I think it was all over his his testimony and also his response to lawmakers who were who, you know and this is a very hostile sort of environment when you're in front of uh you know you're in front of all the cameras and there's you know the you're in these you know very important hearing rooms where a lot of a lot of stuff has happened these are these are not easy situations for anybody to go into and especially when you have people sitting across from you who are asking you very difficult questions questions about like what are you doing and how are you handling this but I think he was very restrained as much as you possibly can be when you're um, being grilled by people who are trying to, you know, get maybe media attention after the hearing, that kind of thing. But I think he, I mean, he said like my, my father was a New York city police officer and, you know, I was a former school resource officer. And I think you really could tell that, that, you know, he was not allowing, like allowing these anti-Semitic things to occur in, in New York schools is a very, grievous thing for for uh, banks there. I think that that was a very big, big issue in his mind. And you could tell, I think, that, you know, student safety was very important to him and that he was trying to, to take the, the district uh, in that direction. So I, I really do think it, it played in. And I think he was able to, you know, le- leverage that and his concern for safety and, you know, for action toward lawmakers and say, you know, this is what we're doing. So I think out of all of the witnesses, he, you know, was the most even keeled and the most, you know, responsive to saying like, this is exactly what we're taking. These are the actions we're taking. Well, thank you for your insights on this story, Brendan. Listeners can keep up with this story and more at chalkboardnews.com. Are you tired of news that puts politics over people? At the nonprofit Franklin News Foundation, we believe in putting people over politics by delivering nonpartisan news and audio content that serves you, the American taxpayer. With Franklin News Foundation, you can read fact based, state focused news for free at thecentersquare.com. You can listen to civil, balanced conversations between policy experts through our podcast network at americastalking.com. Or you can get in-depth news on K-12 education spending, curriculum, and school safety at chalkboardnews.com. It's all free through Franklin, where we put you, the American taxpayer, first in every story, episode, and conversation. And it's only possible through our supporters. Together, we can produce content that puts people over politics and brings Americans the news they deserve. Become a supporter today at franklinnews.org slash donate. Once again, that's franklinnews.org slash donate. 